Hockey Night in Canada presents me, Peter Puck, your irrepressible imp of the ice, and exciting NHL hockey. Peter Puck here again. This time I'm going to tell you about playing the game. NHL hockey, that is, the world's fastest team sport. What makes it the fastest team sport? Well, for one thing, players speed along at up to 25 or 30 miles an hour, and they, whoop, that me about it speeds over 100 miles per hour. We really move once a game starts. Ah. But you say you have seen the game stop. Well, of course you have. But the only time it will stop is because of a penalty or if someone is called offside. Or if someone does what we called icing the puck. First, let's take a look at the rink. The game starts right here at the center face-off circle, like this. The referee drops little old me onto the ice between the two opposing centers. Uh, hi, guys. Now, easy does it, fellas. This is only a demonstration, you know. Oops! Wow! And the game is on! Oops! Hey, ow! Ouch! Oh, why didn't I listen to my mother and become a bicycle tire? Oops! Ow! Or an eraser! Hold it! Whoa! Enough of the face-off. Now for the offsides that stop the game. We have two types of offside infractions. First, there's what we call offside at the blue line. The puck, uh, that's me, must always precede the attacking players across the opponent's blue line. I can be stick handled across, passed across, or shot across. Oops, just as long as it's me first. However, if both skates of an attacking player cross the blue line before I do, that's a no-no. The linesman will stop play, and a face-off will take place in neutral ice at the nearest red dot. The purpose of this rule is to prevent a player from being permanently stationed in front of the opponent's goal. And now for the other offside infraction, known as the two-line pass. This offside is called when a player inside his own defensive zone passes me to a teammate standing across the center red line. Uh-uh, I cross two lines. Now when this happens, play is stopped and a face-off takes place back where the pass originated. And that takes care of the offside rules. Ah, but now we come to icing the puck. Brrr. That sneaky little trick is sometimes perpetrated on yours truly when a defensive player finds the going hot in his zone and decides to cool things off by shooting me all the way. Yikes! Back down the rink and across the opponent's goal line. Whoa! Icing is called as soon as I touch one of the opposing players other than their goalie. Oops. Sorry, Pete. Forget it, Slim. <laughs> In this case, a face-off then takes place all the way back in the defensive player's deep face-off circle. And it serves them right. You gotta play fair, you know. And speaking of play, it's time to play ball. Oh, <laughs> wash my mouth out with slush. It's time to play NHL hockey. Woo! Keep your eye on me. I'm pretty fast. At this time, I'm going to talk about timing, equipment, officials, and players. Hey, cool it, fellas. I got something to say. Howdy, fans. Peter Puck here to lay some facts on you about hockey, the world's fastest team sport. Now, the playing time of a hockey game is 60 minutes, composed of three 20-minute periods, separated by two 15-minute intermissions. Now, to begin with, before the game even starts, I'm given a deep freeze. Ooh, that's to take a little of the bounce out of my hard rubber body. Why, during the game, would you believe? I travel around this rink at speeds over 100 miles an hour. And that's pretty fast for a little guy measuring one inch thick by three inches wide. <laughs> now let's look at our field of play. It's called a rink, and not a rinky-dink rink either. 200 feet long and 85 feet wide almost large enough to contain four basketball courts. The wooden sides of the rink are referred to as, what else? The boards. And above the boards, there's shatterproof glass. See what I mean? Beneath that ice are the markings we call the center red line, and the two blue lines dividing the rink into a middle neutral zone and offensive and defensive zones. 
At each end are the goal lines with the goals themselves. They are four feet high and six feet wide. That rectangle before the goal is called the crease, and only the goalie is allowed there, unless I happen to slip in, and then it's fair territory for anybody. Whoop! Hey, wow! Hey, watch it! Hey, wow! These circles and dots are used for face-offs. That's starting play. These are the players' benches and separate penalty boxes. Now about the officials. There is a referee, two linesmen, and two goal judges, plus some clock watchers and a scorekeeper. The referee, in the striped shirt and orange armbands, is the boss. He's in charge. He starts the game, calls penalties, lays down the law, and his decision in all disputes is final. The referee is assisted in his work by two linesmen, same kind of uniform, but no armbands. The linesmen determine offsides, icing, some penalties, face-offs other than center ice. And they control conduct on the ice. No fighting is permitted, and offenders are removed from play. The penalty timekeeper keeps track of the player's time in the sin bin. Uh, the penalty box, that is. Now, at each end of the rink, we have another official, the goal judge. One sits behind each goal in a glass booth. When I, Peter Puck, cross the red goal line completely, the judge turns on a red light. The red light remains on for 12 seconds and is sometimes accompanied by a buzzer or siren, depending on the arena. The scorekeeper keeps score and the statistics, while the timekeeper keeps time. What else? Now for the players. A team has 17 skaters and two goalkeepers. A team puts six men on the ice. A center, right wing, left wing, right defense, left defense, and goaltender. And the same applies to the opposing team. Now the game is basically simple. The two teams attempt to zap me. Oh, there you have it. The fastest team sport in the whole world. It may be rough and tough on a puck, but love that hockey game. Nice save, fella. Hi, hockey fans, youngsters and grown-ups, too. I'm here to talk about NHL hockey. First, let's review a few rules. Whoops. Hey, there ought to be a rule about hitting a puck when he's not looking. First, I've been telling you that NHL hockey is the world's fastest team sport. Whoops. Well, believe it or not, there are some rules designed to make it even faster. For example, if a player is tagged for a rule infraction and does not proceed directly to the penalty box, his team will be charged with a two-minute bench minor penalty. That means another man also goes to the penalty box, leaving his team with two players short. No more penalty lollygagging without really paying for it. But there are a few special occasions when the clock is stopped. Hey! <laughs> Yikes! That face could stop a clock. Once a goalie could get time out for equipment repair. He could go to the player's bench and remedy his problem. But not now. A goalie in need of repairs must go directly to the bench and a substitute goaltender must take over. And there's no warm-up period allowed. An infraction calls for a minor penalty. It's ready or not. The goalie really goes in cold. But now, that first goalie cannot re-enter the game except during an official timeout. Even if the starting goalie is injured, the sub must move in immediately without benefit of a warm-up. Remember, there are heavy penalties for spearing and butt endings. It'll cost a player a five-minute major penalty and fine. Oh, hey, watch it, you guys. Lay off the rough stuff. There are strict rules against fighting. Any player wearing any foreign material such as tape fists or golf gloves that cut and causes injury, he shall receive a match penalty and his team will have to play one man short for 10 minutes even if the other team scores. But getting back to speeding up the game, the linesmen are instructed on face-off, even if one center, after prior warning, continues to delay the game by conferring with teammates, the puck should be dropped to start play. That's enough for you? Remember, I get slammed about at speeds over 100 miles per hour. 
that could be awfully rough on a little guy like me. That's why we pucks are kind of special. Let me show you how we're manufactured. We're made from a special mixture of vulcanizing rubber. This rubber is extruded or pushed out of its mold like a huge three inch rubber salami. Individual pucks are cut off at one inch slices. These slices, uh, my relatives, are put in a vulcanizing tray. Team insignias are spotted in place. Then the tray cover is secured and 2,000 pounds of pressure is applied while we bake for 20 minutes. Now we're a bunch of hard rubber cookies ready for finishing. Hard edges are beveled off and then moved on to tender loving care in final polishing so that we weigh between five and a half to six ounces. The last touch is the stamping of the NHL insignia and a new season has its supply of hockey pucks. And by the way, did you know that about 30 of us are refrigerated before every game? It's a cold business, folks. But enough about me. Did you ever wonder how hockey skates are built? Well, you know they have to be very strong. First, the blades are stamped out of steel plate. But even then, this metal needs to be toughened up in a furnace where the blades are heated to 1,550 degrees. Then they are cooled in an oil bath. A second furnace gives the blades their final strength. Other parts are stamped from thinner, pre-hardened steel. These are formed into the tube, the posts, and the heel and sole plates. The blade is fitted into the tube and spot welded. Parts are set into position, then spot welded in place to form the skate. Now it receives a copper dip. This is followed by a solder dip. It is now ready for the final hand soldering of all the joints. It then goes through a series of polishing and grinding operations. A linear polyethylene protective cap is set on the blade heel. After a thorough testing, the skate is ready to be riveted to the shoe. Then an inside sanitizing, a toe stain, and a lacquer spray puts the final touch to this quality product that soon will be chasing me about the ice, worn by a fellow hitting at me with a stick. At one time, a hockey stick was a crooked-shaped tree branch. But today, it's a highly sophisticated, scientifically designed piece of sports equipment. It still comes from a tree. Ash is regarded as the ideal wood. After over a year of curing, it is ready for manufacturing. The shaft is rough cut to shape and graded for flexibility. The blade section is rough cut and set into a groove on the shaft. After gluing, the unit is ready for final sawing and sanding to desired shape. The stick receives fiberglass coating for additional strength, and it's ready to whack you-know-who about the rink. Each game will see me being slammed about the rink, and dozens of times toward the goal nets. Of course, that's what hockey's all about. The goalie's job is to keep me from going in for a score. There are a number of terms for how a goalie stops me. This is a stick save. A glove save. A skate save. A blocking pad save with the plastic waffle. That's the shield on the stick glove. A leg pad save. And smothering. That's really laying it on me. Oh, ooh, hey, nice save, fella, but uh, I wish you'd lose a little weight. Wow. Actually, I'm built to take a lot of hard, fast action. Oops. See what I mean? Oops. <laughs> See you around the rink. Where's the... Oh, hi. Remember me? Peter Puck. Well, this break in the action will give me a chance to talk to you about penalties, signs, and fines. As you know, the head man of a hockey game is the referee. Uh-oh. He's calling a penalty. That's the signal for tripping. That means that the tripper must spend two minutes in the penalty box. His team will have to play one man short while he's in the sin bin. However, since tripping is a minor penalty unless an injury results, the penalty time could be shorter. For instance, if the other team has no one in the penalty box, whoops, and scores, the penalized player returns immediately to the ice. Here are some of the most common minor penalties and referee signals. Hooking. That's using the stick to impede an opponent's progress. Elbowing. Hitting an opponent with the elbow. Holding. 
Grabbing with hand or stick. Boarding. That's a violent body check of an opponent into the boards. Interference. Impeding a player not playing the puck. High sticking. Using the stick above the shoulder line. Slashing. A swinging move with stick against an opponent. Charging. Taking more than two strides before hitting. And then there's cross-checking. And, and butt-ending. But these are minor penalties. However, if the referee thinks it was an attempt to injure, any minor penalty can be called a major penalty. And that means five minutes in the penalty pokey. And the penalized player cannot return to the game even if his team is scored on. Now we get into some time and money penalty. Using abusive language or gestures to officials is misconduct. Uh-huh. The referee's signaling misconduct. That's a 10-minute player penalty and a fine. However, a teammate may be sent in to take his place and his team does not play shorthanded. It's usually a major penalty and a fine for spearing or attempting to jab an opponent with the end of the stick. And then there's match penalty. If a player deliberately injures an opponent, he's expelled for the balance of the game and that'll be a fine too. Depending on the severity of the injury, a team plays shorthanded for five or 10 minutes. Here's a different tripping penalty. If a player in possession of the puck has no other opponent to get past, except the goalie, after he has crossed the red center line and is tripped, a penalty shot is awarded the fouled player unless he's injured. Then a designated teammate may take the shot for him. All players leave the ice except the goalie and the shooter. And then they place me on the center face-off spot and the shooter has a go at a goal. This one-on-one -on -one is considered the most exciting play in hockey. When the shooter thinks he's close enough, he gives me his best shot! Love that hockey game! Hi, hockey fans! Thought I'd just slip by. I'm Peter Puck, your knowledgeable, hard-headed hockey expert with a few tips on terms heard during a hockey game. First, you've all heard the term an assist. No, it's not when one player helps another off the ice after a collision. An assist is when player A passes me to his teammate player B, allowing player B to score a goal. In that case, player A is credited with an assist, and no more than two assists are accredited on a goal. Now, when you hear the term save, that's when a goalie stops me from going into his goal cage. Woo! Take it easy, beastie baby. Ugh, it's Halloween all season for this guy.